Uh, it is good to see everybody here this morning. Uh, let's open up with a word of prayer and, uh, and some scripture this morning. Uh, it is good to see. And by the way, uh, happy Father's Day, everybody. Happy uh, Father's Day. I'm going to read from 2 Corinthians chapter 5 to get us uh, started this morning. For we do not commend ourselves again to you, but give you opportunity to boast on our behalf that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance and not in heart. Verse 14, the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Now, all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Father, we humbly bow before you in this moment we thank you for how you have loved us, how you have given us a gift of grace and mercy through your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I pray, oh God, that you would just stir our hearts in remembrance of that this morning. Stir our hearts in such a way that we might worship you, that we might praise you, that we might give you all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. In this moment, it's in the name of Jesus we ask these things. Amen. We're going to go into this time of worship as Pastor Matt and the praise team leads us. If you feel led to stand and pray, stand and praise, raise your hands in worship. Altars open if you want to come and kneel and pray. It's good to see everybody here this morning. to the darkness You're the only right among the wrong You're the only hope among the chaos You are the voice that calls me on Louder than every lie My sword in every fight The truth will chase away the night Your name is over darkness, it's freedom for the captives, mercy for the broken and the hopeless. Your name is faithful in the battle, glory in the struggle, mighty if won't let us down nor fail us. Your name is power. Your name I know it is written, hope is certain. I know that the word will never fail. I know that in every situation, you speak the power to prevail. Louder than every lie, my sword in every fight, the truth will chase away. darkness, freedom for the captives, mercy for the broken and the hopeless, your name 
is faithful in the battle, glory in the struggle. Mighty, you won't let us down or fail us. darkness, the light arrives in heaven opens. Holy Spirit, let us hear it. When you speak, the church awakens. We believe the change is coming. Holy Spirit, let us see it. When you speak, you scatter darkness. Light arrives in heaven opens. Holy Spirit, yes, let us hear it. Holy Spirit, let us hear it. Your name is power over darkness, freedom for the captives, and it's mercy. Your name is faithful in the battle, glory in the struggle. Mighty, you won't let us down or fail us. Your name is power. scattered darkness light arrives and heaven opens holy spirit let us hear it and when you speak the church awakens we believe the change is coming holy spirit let us see it There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. All sufficient sacrifice, so freely given, such a prize bought.
rising up. There's an army rising. So 
shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home. What joy will fill my heart? Amen. It is good to see you all uh, here this morning. If you have your Bibles, I pray that you do turn to Joshua. Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. Um, While you're turning there, I'm going to... Read again just a couple of verses from 2 Corinthians 5. Verse 17 of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to Himself through Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to Himself, not imputing or not charging, not reckoning their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. I need you to remember that. We are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God, for He made Him 
who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Him, in Christ. And so, as we get started on this uh, Father's Day, uh, let me just, you know, begin by saying uh, the most wonderful gift given was the gift of a Father's love giving to you and I His Son, Jesus Christ, and it is through the sacrifice, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ that you and I have been reconciled to God and have been put into a place where we are uh, in relationship with the living God. So we are reconciled to God and put into that. Um, so with that being said, let's go to Joshua. Let's keep in mind this, this great gift, this death, this burial, this resurrection, this new life, this reconciling new work that Christ does in us and, and through us. And then begin in Joshua chapter 1, verse 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. And every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, as I said to Moses." And from the wilderness of this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage, for to... For to this people you shall divide an inheritance, the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So the first thing I want to remind you and I of this morning, think about, think about Joshua. Think about where he's at. He's been, he's been walking with Moses He's been Moses' assistant. I mean, he's been right there. He's been Moses' right-hand man through all the trials, all the tribulations, all the victories, all the, 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 the time that Moses has spent with God. So he's been there all along the way. And so as he's made his way along, now, now Moses is dead. And make no mistake about it, everything, everything has changed for them, you know? I mean, every, I mean Joshua's got to be feeling a little uh, anxiety. He's got to be feeling a little bit of apprehension. Uh, he's got to be feeling a, a, a bit of uh, pressure, if you will. And so, you know, I, I, I just want to remind you, just like God had to remind Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. In other words, yesterday was yesterday, today's a different day, and we got to move on with today. And so, I want to remind you of this, this Father's Day. Sometimes we as, uh, you know, as dads and just... You know, and, and don't just take this, oh, he's preaching a Father's Day message, so since I'm not a dad, I don't have to, you know, it's not really for me. No, it's for all of us as, 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 as in all of humanity, Christian or non-Christian, the reality is, is that every single day brings challenges. And what we're going to see this morning is how God spoke to Joshua and said, hey, uh, this is the path to victory. This is the way in which you can walk with me. This is, how it, this is how we get it done. And so, but especially to you fathers this morning, I just want to remind you, you know, I don't know about you, but man, I, I, have, I have days where I'm really good at being a dad. Oh, that's probably an exaggeration. Really good is probably not the right term. I, I'm, I am good at being a dad. But I'm just going to be honest with you. There's some days when I, I'm not. And I have to be reminded I have to be reminded from the Lord that, that what I did yesterday is, is done. 
that today's a new day. The Bible is, is so clear in the reality that you and I walk in a repentive spirit. What do you mean by that, preacher? I mean this. We need to know, and you need to be just be reminded, you are never, ever, ever going to be able to walk in perfection. But because of the grace of God and the relationship that you and I have with Christ Jesus and the filling of the Holy Spirit that comes when you and I come in relationship with Jesus Christ, it is so true and evident, and we need to walk in it, that today is a new day, all right? That God's mercies are renewed every single day. And I might even remind you that moment by moment that God's mercies are renewed. And so Moses, my servant, is dead. And so the reality is, is that, hey, Joshua, stop mourning yesterday and what was. It's time now to move on and let's get on with today. I've got purpose for you. And so I am praying that you and I would walk in the purposes of God. Look what he says here. Uh, therefore arise and go over this Jordan. There was a purpose to the living. There's a purpose to the living. What's the purpose that God's left you and I here for? You know, I, I mean, let's just be honest about it. Man, I mean, 2020 has been, you know, quite crazy. I talked about it Wednesday night, all the different things going on. It's like, you know, I mean, I love the Facebook memes, you know, going, hey, what's July going to bring for us in 2020, right? And everybody's going like, like can we just get to 2021, get a do-over, right? I mean, let's, can we just move on from this? I mean, this is, this is wild, is it not? And, 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 but it's just, a, it's just a big picture that you and I need to be reminded about. There are so many things that you and I can't control. They, they are just, they are out of our hands. And we can get wired up and been out of shape about it. And get a, but there are some things that have absolutely been left to us by God for this day and every single day. And it is the purposes of God. The purposes of God for us to, number one, to love God. And then to love our neighbor. You know, in the grand scheme of the big things, you know, I'm just being honest about, you know, the more I look at the world, you know, the more I realize my circle's got to get a whole lot smaller. I've got to get in and just, I've got to invest in people's lives one-on-one, -on -one, and that's how I'm going to change things. I'm not going to change things on a grand scale. I mean, you know, do I understand the reality that, do I understand the reality that being on being live and on the internet and the, the message gets saved and it goes out and lots of people see it and there might be somebody you know across the country or even around the world that might watch this and God touch them absolutely I'm reminded of that my you know my wife got saved watching Billy Graham on TV you know so I, I get that I understand that there's some there's some there's some reality and truth to that but for my purpose of living our circle needs to be small. We've got to pour. God's called us. What did He tell us to do? What did He tell us to do? Make disciples. Go and make disciples. That's the reason why you've been left here, O oh child of God. The fact that you are in relationship with Jesus Christ, fellowshipping with the living God, and that He did not take you home right then and put you into the awesome, wonderful, beautiful presence of God at that very moment where everything would be taken away and you would know nothing but the joy of being in, in God's presence. The reason he did not do that is he left you here to be a light, to be a lamp, to make disciples, to tell others about what Christ has done for you. We've been left here. In other words, I've been saying this for you are missionaries. We're all missionaries. We're on mission from God. I sounded very uh, Blues Brothers, did it not? <laughs> we're on mission from God there's a purpose to it and so I, I just sense that I need to tell some people here this morning my spirit's just stirred but especially to the fathers that yesterday is dead and today is a fresh new day for purpose today's a fresh new day for purpose and you know what? I, I'm just guessing. I have to be so careful now because this stuff's online. My mom's on Facebook now, so she watches this stuff. 
we're going to hang out with them this afternoon. Sorry, Mom. But I'm, I'm just get probably sometime this afternoon. I, I, I won't act right. I'm just telling you. It'll be my kids. It'll be my mom and dad. It'll be my brother. Love y'all. But you know what will happen after that? I, I Listen. I, I know where it comes from. It comes from my flesh. It comes from the enemy whispering, trying to get you right. You know what I mean? Trying to divide, break things up, do things, put wedges in between me and my children, me and my spouse, me and my family. I understand all that stuff. But do you understand the beauty? Do you Listen to what I'm telling you now. Do you understand the beauty of what Jesus Christ did on the cross when he died for you? That the fact that the Holy Spirit indwells you and the fact that he says, if you'll just come to me in your, fa- in your foul, fallible flesh, right? Your broken down flesh that will never get it completely. If you'll just come to me in repentance and confess that, I will give you fresh and a new start right then, right there, that moment. So this moment... Moses, my servant is dead. And hey, Joshua, hey, child of God, this morning, today's a day. Let's get started with the purposes of God. Let's live for him. And listen to the promises. Verse 3. You know, it's not just enough to know the per- purpose, but we've got to know the promise. Look at what he tells Joshua. Hey, I told Moses some things. Moses messed up. I dealt with Moses. But I made a promise. And I'm going to stick to it. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you as I said to Moses. So how does that... We were in in 2 Peter chapter 1 for so long. Let me read some of this and let me just remind you about the promises of God, All right, Let me just remind us about the promises of God out of 2 Peter chapter 1. Verse 2 of 2 Peter chapter 1, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as His, as God's divine power has given to us, that's us, in our fallibility, right? In our brokenness, as His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises. And that through these, through what? Through these precious promises, you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Victory over sin, victory over our brokenness, victory over yesterday's mess up, victory over this morning's mess up. Every single bit of that hinges upon you and I understanding and standing upon the promises of the living God. What he said about you and I. And so it would be a good thing for you to read your Bible and let God tell you who you are in Christ Jesus. Let him remind you of those things. The promises of God. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread, I have given you, as I said to Moses. I'm telling you, when God says something about you, you when God says something about you, you should stop listening to, even to yourself. You hear that? You should even stop listening to yourself. I mean, I think it's a good thing for us to do self-reflection. I I like to get alone and and I get my journal out and I will sit there and I, and I, I, I think we should do some of that. But I'm going to tell you something. If you sit around so much and all you do is look in the mirror, look in the mirror of your own soul and see your brokenness and your sinfulness and you never, ever open up your Bible... And let God speak to you about who you are in Christ Jesus. You have a false picture. You have a false picture about who you are in Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you, there is victory in being reminded about who we are in Christ. Watch this. Look at verse 5. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Now listen, that's the presence of God, is it not? 
Do you and I not need to be reminded of those things? See, you, you with me? All right, so, so sin in the past, brokenness in the past, whatever it is, brokenness from this morning, brokenness from what may happen this afternoon or tomorrow, you with me? I mean, we're, we're going to fail, right? We're going to fail. But we need to be reminded. I mean, we just need to be reminded. I've left you here for a purpose, even in your fallibility, all right? Uh, by the way, I've given you some promises and I've told you who you are. And as I've told you who you are, as I've told you who you are, now, can I just remind you of this? I will be with you while you go through this life. I'm going to be with you. One of the great joys of my, uh, you know, of, of of parenting has been those moments when I have convinced my children to do something and that they would be all right, even though they were scared. You know, there was a time when uh, I had Chelsea where she would stand on just about anything I would put her on. I would make people so nervous. I would stand her up, put her on a countertop. I'd put her on a wall somewhere, and I would stand there, and I would say, listen, I'm telling you right now, if I tell her to jump, she will jump. She ain't going to ask any questions. She's not going to do scared I can remember the first you do it but the first time you jump guess what dad catches you right dad catches you and then all of a sudden you do it and so at that point on if I put Chelsea up on there and told her to jump she's jumping why because she knows that I'm, I'm going to be there and I'm not going to tell her why is it why is it that some of us in here we know what God's called us to do and what God's told us to do what is it that's keeping us afraid of doing have we forgotten that the one that called you to be a disciple maker, to tell others, to share your story about how you got saved, how you came to a relationship with Christ, have you forgotten the reality that God has promised that He will be with you wherever you go? He's going to be with you wherever you go. He's with you right now. That, I mean, we need to be reminded of that. We need to remember those things. God's presence with us. Not just that, not just God's presence with us, but in that presence, He's also instructing and teaching us, is He not? I mean, is He not, not helping us do? I, I mean, I'm, I, I, there's, you know, I was, I was thinking about, I mean, can't help it, it's kind of like, you know, it's Father's Day, so you're kind of meditating on those things. And, and I remember, I remember the way I learned to drive, all right? You know, I, I can remember first step, sitting in Dad's lap. I can remember getting in my dad's lap, being in that old Ford pickup truck. I can remember being there and, and driving. And then I can remember when I shifted from being able to steer when I was going along that, that I was allowed not to steer, but I was taught how to work the pedals, right? So then you had to clutch, and I had to learn to do gear shift. It was a shift on the column. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you, some of you can't even drive a stick shift, much less think about a stick shift that's been on a column. But I learned to drive a Ford with a three-speed column uh, shift anyway and so he, he taught me he was with me and then there came a point where I sat in his lap right I sat in his lap and and I and I got to do both like I was a big deal like I was steering and and, and it was funny how you know I, I think back on it now how I thought I was in so much control right you thought you were in control but you, you know the truth is is that dad was really always in control because I can remember having to push, like I was so small sitting there trying to do that I would have to push it. And when I would, I'd have to look down and push like this right here. There was no way I was steering very well, honestly, right? But we were doing it. And then it got to the place where, you know, and I think about this. I'm kind of glad this is on there. I might make dad watch this. I, I, then I remember when I, I was so privileged to go out on my own, right? I was probably 12 or 13 years old. Uh, we would be getting, it would, it would be, it would be wintertime. I'll, I'll remember now that I only was allowed to drive solo in the wintertime. And what I know now is, is that really what he was doing was having me warm the truck up to get the heater working. He didn't want to get in. <laughs> but every single morning, right, when it was cold, hey, go, go take the truck down to the pecan orchard. And that's what he would tell me. So I, I was able to drive. Most, most mornings it was before daylight. I was able to drive, drive the truck down to the Pekin Orchard, turn around, I was about on my own, I'm driving and I'm doing, you know. And, but even in that, think about that. 
Even in that, Dad gave me the direction and the place to go and where to go. In other words, you go this way, go down to the Pecan Orchard. I know that's a safe trip, you know what I mean? It ain't like he dropped me off on 285, you know, at 13 years old with the stick shift, right? You know, you know what I'm saying? It, 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 was, it was controlled. Can, can, I, can I just tell you? Wherever you are, whatever you're going through, I mean, I, I, I mean, whatever's happening in your life right now, in this circle of world that you're happening in, God loves you and God is with you. His presence is with you. And you need to remember that, that His presence is with you. Which brings me to verse 6. Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers. Verse 7, only be strong and very courageous. We, we've got to have some courage in this, folks. We've got to have some courage. There's a boldness that the presence of God ought to give the children of God. And it needs to be put placed under the empowerment and the filling of the Holy Spirit. You and I need to have a bold courage to stand strong for who God is in us and what God's called us to do. And not be timid and not be afraid. Now, you know, every bit of that needs to be tempered by the Holy Spirit. I mean, I know how it is sometimes. Listen, sometimes we allow our... We don't have the righteousness of God. Sometimes what we do is we get some self-righteousness, right? We get a little bit of victory or we see somebody that's doing something that we don't necessarily agree with or whatever. And so we want to, we uh, you know, go on the attack. And can I, and can I just say, you know, you know I want to say to each his own, and that's not really the case. Whatever the Holy Spirit, however the Holy Spirit's leading you. But please, please, please make sure that you have your opinions and your things under the, under the containment of the Holy Spirit because the number one purpose that you... Here's a word for you. Let me, let me say it like this. You will never, ever be anybody else's Holy Spirit for them. And it doesn't matter how angry you get or how warped you think their thinking is or how sideways their behavior is, you will never be their Holy Spirit for them, period. I assure you, I've tried it over the time. I've tried to be, wanted it, wanted, wanted the Holy Ghost for somebody way more than they wanted it for themselves. And I assure you of this, it cannot, but I can tell you what you can do if you'll go back and you'll understand this. Number one, the purpose that God's called you for. Number two, you'll remember the promises of God. Number three, remember the presence of God. Let me tell you what you'll do. You will go into your prayer closet. I said this the other week. You want to make change in this world? It's time for the church of the living God to start living in those three things. The purpose of God, the promise of God, and the presence of God. And go into our prayer closet and close the door and begin to pray in secret. And God will do openly what we're asking in secret. We're, we're trying to live in just the opposite. What you and I are trying to do, we're trying to walk out openly and live openly and speak things and post things and change and all these things. We want all that and I'm just telling you right now what you and I need to do according to what God says, this is how it change comes, is for you and I to close the door and get alone with God and cry out to God. And God will change things. Yes, he will. I mean, it goes back to the ex expression, I've been talking to him until I'm blue in the face, right? Talking to him until I'm blue in the face. I'm, Sheila and I discovered a long, long time ago that if you want change to happen, you get alone with God, you're on your face before God, and you begin to pray, and God will change things. Courage, boldness. Watch this one. Not only that, but in the midst of the purpose and, and the promise and the presence and the courage. Courage comes from verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night. 
I just wrote down delight in, meditate in, think about. That's what that means. It, just, it means to think about. I heard someone say it's like, and some of you may not even can understand, it's like chewing the cud, right? Cows, here's a science lesson. So cows have four stomachs. I think that's right. Somebody will correct me if I'm wrong. Science teacher. Four stomachs, right? Yeah? Okay, thank you. For a moment there, I was thinking to myself, I don't know if this is going to work or not. I should have just left the details out, right? <laughs> but anyway, four stomachs. Eats the grass, swallows it. Then the food comes back up into the mouth and the cow chews the cud and then it goes into the next stomach and so on and so forth, all right? Meditating upon God's Word. That's why I say, folks, you ought to memorize Scripture. Everybody doesn't have the privilege. Listen, if I'm having a bad day, I, I, man, I get to tell Kim, Kim, please don't let anybody bother me. Uh, don't let phone calls come through. I'll return phone calls a little bit later on. And I go open up my Bible and, and I get to be there. And then if anybody comes by, they say, well, the preacher's in there reading his Bible. And everybody's like, amen and hallelujah. But I don't know about you, but on your job, I'm just guessing, right? I'm just guessing if you just take a time out and say, well, I mean, if Randy's knocking along and say, well, Randy, how come you didn't make it? I said, well, you know what? I mean, somebody cut me off. I was in a bad place. I just pulled the truck off and took an hour and read my Bible, right? I mean, that, it doesn't necessarily work that way. Well, I, we appreciate that, Randy, but you've got to get here with the truck. I'm looking at Jeremiah in the back. Potato chips don't get delivered. Can't just pull over. So why do you, what do you do? You memorize scripture or you write it on, on postcards. You put it there. My goodness, with our phones now and we've got them, you know, you can bring it up. Bring up the beauty of God in his word and remind yourself of it on a regular and consistent basis. Delight in it. The more that you bring it up, put it into your mind, think about it, chew it if you will, toss it around, ask yourself some questions about it. I, I'm telling you, I sat there over this scripture last night, couldn't sleep about 1 o'clock in the morning, and just realized last night I've, I've had a street light in my front yard that I've not liked for a long time, threatened to shoot it out and uh, do it. I mean, it just makes a bunch of noise, right? And I just, just realized last night that it's off. And, and so I was outside on the porch late. You could see the stars. And so I was just laying back, and I'm just praying over you all. Looking at the stars and the lights out, I'm like, man, I'm glad that lights out so I can see the stars. And I'm just meditating on this, on this scripture, just Joshua chapter 1, be strong, be courageous. Oh God, do that in our hearts and our lives. We now as the church of the living God need this more than anything. And I'm just rolling it over and over in my mind. I, it's dark, I, can't, I don't even have my Bible, but I've got it here. Delight in it. And so God says all these things to God says all these things to Joshua. And so then in verse 10, Joshua turns to the people and it begins to say, and look down in chapter 1, all the way to verse 16, when it all gets said and done. God speaks and says it to the people. And here's so they answered Joshua, saying, All that you command us, we will do, and wherever you send us, we will go. My, my encouragement to you this morning is simply this. You need to turn to your Lord and your leader, Jesus Christ. And wherever He sends you, you need to go. And whatever He tells you to do, you need to do. It is not sufficient for you, child of God, to operate under the grace of God and never function in the purpose of God and the presence of God. He's called you. You're a missionary. Arise and do what God said do. And yesterday is dead. Yesterday's done. We can't get it back. You can't go capture it back. Maybe... Yes, all of yesterday's have consequences for today, but I can tell you this. You can walk through the consequences of yesterday today with the presence of God. And God will honor His Word, His calling upon your life. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have the praise team come up and lead worship on this last song, but before we do that, here's what I want to do, all right? It's Father's Day. 
Y'all, y'all come on. Y'all come on. So here's what I want. I want every father, I want every father to stand up. Even if you're out there in the hallway, I want you to stand up, dads. You know what? I want, I want, even if you're not a father, men, I want you to stand up. All right? Just, just you guys. All right? Now, those of you still sitting, y'all stretch your hands out. Because I'm going to tell you something. We're going into days that are going to be difficult. And I know some of you ladies, and I, listen, I know we are some odd, odd creatures. And I know it's hard to live with us. But I'm telling you now, God wired in us to be both provider and protector. And the truth is, the tone and the strength of the body of Christ rest in the leadership of men. And so we're fixing to pray. Father, in Jesus' name. God, I I pray that you would, Holy Spirit, that you would do something within us. It's it's not, we don't doubt your word. We know it's there. We know it's true. Here it is. And God, I pray pray over these men and I ask that you would do something in our hearts and our minds. That you would give us a supernatural boldness. God, that we would walk and operate in the, in the ministry of reconciliation. Oh God, that we would lead our homes, that we would lead the church. God, that we would take ownership of your purpose. Oh God, would you do that for us today? God, would you just take our hearts and set our hearts so aflame for your purpose in this world. That we would live for it. Your purpose for our families. So, God, in these moments, we yield to you. And we know that the power comes from you, comes from your hand, your mercy, your grace. And so we ask for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Would the rest of you join us in standing? Altars open, come and kneel and pray. As Pastor Matt and the praise team leads us this morning, let's worship together. consuming fire a burning holy flame with glory and freedom our God is the only righteous judge ruling over us with kindness and wisdom and we will keep our Keep our eyes on you. A mighty fortress is our God. A sacred refuge is your name. Your kingdom is unshakable. Our God is jealous for His own. None could comprehend His love and His mercy. Our God is exalted on His own. High above the heavens, forever He is worthy. And we will keep our Oh, 
So I'd said this at the beginning of the service. I was just sitting there thinking about this. So uh, next week, we will do two services, one at 9 a.m. and then a second service at 10.30 a.m. All right? Can y'all say that back to me? 9 a.m., 10.30 a.m. Very good. All right, y'all. Yeah, okay. I'm just saying. I'm looking around trying to see so that when somebody texts me that was in this group going, what time did you say last week? Anyway, uh, know this, that uh, also uh, be in prayer. We, we've sent out some surveys. We've done some things. Uh, we are looking, uh, we're looking in July to begin looking at children's ministry and nursery coming back up online. Uh, now, so we're looking at that for July, latter part of July. Uh, so Keep that in your prayers. We're watching things, trying to trying to do what's right and think and act right and all those good things. And so, anyway, uh, but be in prayer for that, all right? All right, I believe that's it. It was good to see everybody here. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Father, thank you for speaking to us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.